my chest is swelling with pride as I am describing the unique method of tubal ligation. It is called Schroedker 96 method of tubal sterilization. It is for this very reason I am going to describe it on a sentimental note. Did you know why he thought of devising a new method of tubal ligation? I will tell you why. The father of obstetricians and gynecologists of India, as I would like to call him, had a very high that is about 10% failure rate with the use of the traditional Pomeroy's method. He reasoned that this was because in those days Indian women underwent tubal ligation at a very young age and therefore had a very high fertility index leading to high failure rates. On reopening these cases who had failed, he discovered that this was because the ligature was too tight and had cut through the approximated walls of the tube. The cut ends drop down and come together leading to reanastomosis and subsequent failure. In order to describe the technical minutiae of this method, I will paraphrase what he has written in his book Contributions to Obstetrics and Gynecology, a Livingston Limited publication. I quote, I have devised a simple yet 100% successful method to prevent this. I cut across mid-segment of the tube and ligate each end with linen half an inch from the cut end. This half inch length of tube is folded backwards and ligated again as shown in the picture. Thus the two ends are turned away from each other. So I call it the 96 method. Unquote. According to him, because the cut ends are in opposite direction, recanalization is not possible. Please note that in Shirodkar's 96 method, no segment of fallopian tube is removed. On a lighter note, in our residency days, we used to call it the 69 method, pun not intended. Many of Shirodkar's patients who underwent sterilization by his method came back for recanalization for various reasons. According to him, reanastomosis can be done very easily. All that you have to do is join the two ends. The illustrations shown here are original drawings from his book Contributions to Obstetrics and Gynecology. Before I end, one more quote from his book. I do not like to bury the female end in the broad ligament for temporary sterilization as femurae are very delicate structures which are destroyed by adhesions and hydrosalpings is likely to develop. If you want to know more about different methods of female sterilization, please read my popular book Practical Obstetrics and Gynecology.